Do you know what he referred to you as? Are you going to embarrass me or something? The Meryl Streep of comedy. Oh, my God. I, I remember being oh my at dinner God. with him. And, and, <sighs> saying, and, and when, when you had signed on you know, to, to be in We're the Most, he goes, oh, you know she's the Meryl Streep of comedy. Oh, my God. If we just fa fall into silence, we'll fix it in post. We'll go right to pandemic <laughs> and time all, time. all of the <laughs> immediately to the weight of the world on the rest on this show and people's optimism around it. But I mean, listen, are you in the middle of shooting season two? We are. We are in the final third of shooting season two. Yeah, we, we've got about five more weeks. Series two, as they say over here in the UK. Not season oh. two, but series two. Yeah, of Ted. And also, they they say jumpers. Yeah, instead yeah. of sweaters. Yeah. So you guys were shooting when it kind of hit the way that it has hit. No, no, we were well uh -oh. done. We we shot like August through November of 2019. So we were editing the show when when you know S hit the fan, you know, um, as it were, and. And so, yeah, I, and, and having only edited a few things, you know, in my, my days as a writer at SNL, it was, it was learning to edit, you know, on a laptop, you know, through, through like this medium here, which was, you know, I mean, if you don't know any better, then it's kind of like, yeah, this is just how you do it. And it was kind of Wait, you edited that, that you edited the first season series on a laptop? Yeah, yeah, through Zoom. That's amazing. Yeah, it, it, was, it, was, it was fun. I mean, you know, you got to do it in, in sweatpants. And, you know, I just sort of kept that going the entire time. I am so bursting uh, with with pride for you and your success. I'm oh. like, was I can't even like every time I get to hear you say an acceptance speech, my heart's like, <laughs> because oh, I dude. knew you from that little movie we did that ended up being a big movie. But <laughs> <laughs> I know down there in Wilmington, North Carolina. We are the Millers, which they then, you know, made we're the Millers, you know, because contractions, you know, put butts in seats. Everybody knows that. Yep. Uh, Everybody knows that. <laughs> that was what, 2000, 2013 we made that? I don't know, Dave. Which doesn't even but, seem I mean, that, I do... that long ago, and yet it really, no. really is. It's, but it's like a, but it also was like a life, I mean, it does also feel like a lifetime ago. Oh, but I also sure. like, wa I remember though watching you. On that set, though, and being struck by you as a writer yourself, like I knew because you took the you definitely helped take the reins with a lot of the writing in the making of that. I mean, I think it was like collaborative. I was a meddler. I was a meddler. I was an, I, You're a meddler. <laughs> the happy meddler. <laughs> but I remember being like, oh, this he's a writer. He's just totally a writer and a director. Oh, boy. Feels different, coach. I mean, the same, but different. Metaphor? You know it, baby. Tell me about, like, the inception. Like, I, I had heard that it came from commercials, which I'm also like, what? Yeah, we did. We did, uh, being two of my buddies, uh, Brendan Hunt, who plays Coach Beard on the show, and then a fellow named Joe Kelly, who's one of the producers and writers on the show. And we've all been friends for, you know, 20 years. And NBC Sports, we're, we're going to do uh, start showing Premier League soccer. And they're like, how, <laughs> how do we get Americans to watch it? And they're like, oh, we should have someone play a, a, an American football coach that coaches that. And then I was just like, okay. There you go, tackle! What the hell, that's not a tackle. It's just sliding around. Soccer tackle, sir. Yeah, all right there, Gary! I know the least. And so, oh, you do? No, I knew very, very little. And I still know very little. It's a very complex, beautiful, beautiful game that's been around for hundreds of years. So, uh, you know, I only know a little bit. Then those both those commercials went, you know, were received well. It was Olivia. Olivia was like, you should do it as like a TV show or a movie. You guys like doing it. I was like, I was like, oh, yeah, that's a good idea. In that moment of when she mentioned it, we were like out at dinner in Brooklyn. And I was just like, yeah, but why would he go over there? And then just sort of like at dinner, rip the whole thing about, you know, oh, I could see if he's having, if he needs space, like from his wife or from, you know, his partner. We didn't have him having a kid yet. And it was just, I just sort of like spun that out. I was like, oh, that, well, that's more compelling to me. And that sort of like grounded the, the, the character into a little bit more of what it is now on the show than it was in the commercial. Because the commercial is just me being, a you know, American doofus. You know, it's all the same. Yes. Talk and all that same mustache and 
all that jive. Then met Bill Lawrence, and then you know, three years later, here we are. 2015 was when we sat down to like try to write the pilot, and then it wasn't until I, mean, I guess I don't remember 2018, like you know that that we kind of came back. You know, we had we had our little boy. We had you know we made another show called Detroiters, and it was just like hurry up and wait, as they say. So when did you guys shoot? Uh, your show was it? One of it. You no, know, I know the name of it, but I mean, who, you know, I don't know. If, I didn't know to call it your show or the show or their show. I, yeah, I, don't I, would, I, don't, I don't, I, What if I was just going to call it my show? Can I give you a bit of friendly advice? Is it about the way I'm dressed? Yes, but it's too late for that. <laughs> we shot that right mid March, and then we knew that we had a the, to do the finale, um, and it was going to be like six weeks later, and then of course you know, the world, everything fell apart. And so we went back and did the finale in, in like, I think it was like August and it was so hot here, Jason. And the crew yeah. all had to wear not only the masks, but like the shields. But anyway, they did it. I was like in awe. Who's been messing up everything? It's been Agatha all along. You know, when they pitched it to me, when they said like, also because I had gone in for general just to like say, meet everybody. And then this was like two days later, they asked me to come back, which I was like, and when they said that she's a witch and uh, that I got a theme song and that it was like, I, that I was able to go through all the decades and I had never, I was not familiar with Agatha Harkness, who I play in it, I, in the comics. Like I just am not, I'm yeah. not like a deep reader of the comics. But like she's a centuries old witch and it just was like, I couldn't, I really couldn't have imagined a cooler entry to this world. Like it yeah. was so, so fun. Like, yeah. I mean, just, just a, a ball. Like Between that and Spider-Verse. Yeah, I, I know. Mean, that was just my voice. Yeah. Well, but still. I, but yeah, but that was a, but yeah, to play Doc Ock, like forget it. Come on. I mean, yeah, a dream. Is there a role? that you found people step to you more often than not and like, hey. I mean now, yeah, now it's, and I could have never it sunk it, but it's definitely one of it because yeah. like, I, I think that I just didn't. And that's something you, I would have never thought in my wildest dreams that, that I would have been in a Marvel gig. Like it's, it's so What's that? I mean, like, yeah, what? talk about that. I mean, that's, that's as iconic as being like, can I say baddie, you know, like yeah. you know, that's an iconic thing though. I mean, being a, being a comic book hero or villain, since I, you know, I was a kid, you know, from, you know, Superman, yeah. to, you know, Michael Keaton is Batman. He's, he's my Batman. He'll always be my Batman. Oh, um, oh but, for sure. Know. I'm sorry. Yeah. I did no respect to everybody else, <laughs> yep. but yeah. We love him. I'll be fine. Just go with Agnes. <laughs> I promise I won't bite. Mm. I actually did bite a kid once. You're preparing for something like, like for WandaVision. Did you watch a lot of like, I mean, old sitcoms, when you when you come home from work, if you're away from the family, do you find yourself watching stuff still about the project you're doing or do you just turn it off completely? I have zero social media. So I, um, which started out just as laziness. And then I just was like, oh, screw it. And I'm then, the same. I'm the same, actually. Oh, we're, you are? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> I don't, I just, I feel like I like to lurk around. I'm fine lurking at other people's is not like, but yeah. I'm feel very like, I don't, I don't need to contribute. I, yeah. I'm, I'm okay with it. out there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Also, sometimes I would just be nervous that I would press, press send way too fast. Um, but I think like for, for, for WandaVision, we had a, like a boot camp basically uh, like a sitcom boot camp because you know each episode takes place in a different decade yeah. and so we really were able to go deep on like the different comedy styles and how it's changed and culturally how like we've changed of what we like you know the sitcom has always been so uh, so aspirational especially like a family sitcom yeah. so it's just really interesting to go back and um look at all of that and dig into it. And it, it was a real, real awesome, like couple of weeks together as a group. Watching game film which, almost. It's like, you know, hanging out and yes. talking about it, like almost like live tweeting in communication. Yes. Face. Like being like, I think yes. this about this or laughing together at something or like comment. I mean, it felt, well, we kind great. of, because the first episode was shot in front of a live audience. So it was like, we rehearsed it like a play. So by the time we got to the meat of it, like it was, we already had this kind of real ensemble, juicy ensemble feeling. And like everything about it though, Jason, like 
there were these Marvel, you know, these guys that were used to like blowing up stuff for Avengers, like we're literally using like wires to like make the magic happen. I mean, it was so fun. There was like yeah. period lights. There was like period. Everybody was, the crew was dressed in period clothing. Wait, like the real? audience was dressed. Yeah. Like it was That's so fair. magical. We had that like sketch, the sketch like at SNL, like where, where it's like I've dressed in so many different things from, you know, 10 years or eight years on the cast of SNL that I, I sort of almost take it, took it for granted. Uh-huh. You know, I, I, I don't, I don't now because it's, it's, it's so far in the, in the past, but you just like, uh, what, what's next? Who's hosting this week? Do I matter? You know, <laughs> you're just, you're just totally. So, do I matter? <laughs> but no, you're right. You have all that in your bones. Like, it's so interesting because I came from the theater. So like that's the same for me is like I I know like it didn't feel as shocking to me, I guess, to be running backstage, like looking for a prop or whatever. But I think that's what a theater training was helpful in those in so many regards. I mean, loan wise aside, it was like you know, you pick up your costumes, you hang up your clothes at the end of the day. There's like, you're in charge of your props. Like you're in charge of, like there's a work ethic about it that I'm I'm sure you feel from SNL too, that I definitely have respect for people that, that know that like you're in charge of your personhood. Like, come on, we're actors. Like it's so insane, but I I love, I love theater actors and I love like, you know, former athletes, you know, or people that played like team sports, like, like the same, same kind of thing. They're just kind of exactly. They, they shot free throws in their driveway, you know, well after, you know, dinner was done and maybe before they got to their homework or instead of their homework at all, like myself. And, you know, you just mm. like, yeah. And, and Second City. Did you, ever, did you ever have any designs when you, I mean, you went through Northwestern and then like, but like that whole improv world in, in Chicago didn't never, never no. dip a toe. I, I'd never dipped a toe. I was like, I was like serious actor. I admired it too much. And like the improvisers that I know, like the improvisers that I know, like you included that I'm like, whew, that is a, if I have a character to, to hang on to, then I'm okay. Like if I know who I am and yeah. what I'm going for, but like out, the out of nothing of it, 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 it was oh, I think every time I've tried, out of nothing. Yeah, tried no, it, it all, it's been a nightmare. It always like, helps. Where's yeah, my contact always- lens? <laughs> Like, oh boy, creating problems. Now the prop guy's like, I, I, I didn't know we were supposed to have contact. I, I have my own solution in my in my gym bag. It's like, it's okay, Randy. It's okay. Exactly. She's improvising. We won't use this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I think that, then I, then I went like, then I was in New York for a while. My then um, boyfriend, now hubby, we moved to New York for a while. And then I went to, um, yeah, I just kept doing theater. Had no a- aspirations for like. Um, to film it. For this, any of it to be no. filmed, <laughs> for any of it to no. be seen, I thought a it would just be. <laughs> no, yeah, right. I thought, oh no, <laughs> just light and fireworks, just slip yes. and go, pop, explode, noisy, bright, beautiful. And I don't need this, to see this thing in perpetuity. <laughs> that was a real shift. Was moving out to LA after um, after grad school was like, I went out here with a show called Crossing Jordan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I played the grief counselor in the morgue typecasting if there ever was one how'd you get on Lily, Laba- Lily Lebowski you had you had to talent your way out of that box you know that's all, that's all well you know what I did I, what I did learn was I had to sit opposite another grieving guest star every single week and it was like whew, to come onto a set for one day and be like my daughter was ripped in two oh, by yeah, a train yeah. and then they had to go right into it so I would just be like just like listen and then just learn because like that was those are the hardest gigs in the world. The day players that right. have to go so deep. Yeah, they're all just jamming like yes. Sarah McLaughlin when they're disc man and then ripping those headphones off and going right. In. Oh, totally, totally. Yeah. Hey, Being the like, trade. if they need menthol for the eyes, I, there is no judgment here because yeah, yeah. this is an impossibility. <laughs> There's like everyone waiting around to get it before lunch. Like all the crews is like. Like, so, and then they're like, oh, God. Anyway, yeah, it's such deep, deep empathy. Deep, 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 deep empathy. And remember it. Like, I have such PTSD from being that character. Like, they would have to come in and just, the pressure. One of my favorite things about you, and, and, and I'll go all the way back, when someone plays comedy in a way that I believe you can't tell if it's comedy, if you have the sound off. I mean, a lot of times, you know, mm. comedies are brighter or whatnot, but when you just play something 
so real, like you and Step Brothers. This is what we're trying to do, and you know, on 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 Ted Lasso. And I, I always think about the test being, if you're remember airplanes, and you'd you'd be like you know sitting somewhere, and and there'd be someone watching a, a screen in front of you, and you're like, what is that movie? And if you, like I, I get I get sucked in so much watching like yes. a movie with the sound off, being like, yes, oh yeah. And if it's something you've never seen before, and you can't tell if it's a comedy or a drama. Yes, like, I, it delights me to no end, and so like me I too. feel like you have that you you sort of you know aim for that target. Is that intentional? Do you find? I mean, I feel like I'm always attracted to the stuff that's like rides that line. My favorite material or or movies or heroines were the kind of like really messy, you know, ones from the '70s and '80s that just was like a, a woman that was like. A mess, like not not like contradictory, um, passionate, hungry, unabashedly embarrassing. Like just like the, I, I love that kind of character, and I love a, a I love that line. Yeah, right between comedy and drama, where you're not sure if you're going to burst into tears or start laughing. Like that catch is like the sweet the sweet spot, and yeah. it. It's all in the writing, of course, and then looking into your scene partner's eyeballs. So yeah, like I, I, that's exactly it. Like that's where I find um, that's like the hottest spot for me. Just ignore him. Okay, he's really honking and it's making a huge scene. I think he just wants to say hi. Oh my god! <laughs> Wait, I have a joke. Yeah. Do you remember pitching me something? Oh my god, it was brilliant. Oh, that's very and I think it's in the blooper. I think it's in the bloopers. And it was when I was talking when I can't even remember my character's name. Oh, I, Edie. I think I think I do remember. Listen, this, I'm just telling you guys, the viewers, the given yeah. circumstances of Edie and, and we are the Millers. Yeah. The formally titled we are the Millers. <laughs> is that Edie had a shallow vagina. And yeah. so there was she was a medical big, term. long monologue, medical term, yeah. big, long talk about why and how it's affected her life and we kept trying in a lot of different ways i tried it a bazillion different ways it was very difficult for us of course to keep it together and then jason at some point pitched and told me not to tell nick nick, say, nick offerman <laughs> who played your, your nick husband. offerman yep amazing um that it would look like a stormtrooper hanging out when i tried to insert a tampon <laughs> T and also tampon so my friend bought me a box of tampons and I'm telling you, I had such a hard time inserting those. Mm. And it would just stick halfway out. It was just like a Roman candle. Mm -hmm. It always seemed like as if I was a, I had a stormtrooper dick. Oh. But I was crying. I was laughing so hard because that, and that image is indeed in the blooper reel. And um, <laughs> oh my God, that was all you. And it, you, it, was, cru it was cruel because Nick Offerman could not uh, oh. just stop laughing. He was crying so hard. It made me laugh so hard, that image. Because I was like, exactly. It's the best part of the, certainly Ted Lasso, but also working at SNL during the generation I did or, or any of the, you know, comedy films like, like the horrible bosses movie with, with Jason Bateman and Charlie yeah. Day and, and then all our, all the major movie stars that also did the movie. Um, but is, is when you see someone doing something and just like kind of just being like a little joke whisper going, you know, oh, it might be kind of great. <laughs> you know? And that's when it's like, oh, I love what yeah. I do. Like, I, I just, I, I, I know this sounds like bananas, but I'm, I'm still like in awe of actors. I've found myself th that sometimes when people come up to me and mention maybe a specific Saturday Night Live sketch, that I feel an instant connection with them where I'm like, it, like, oh, you see me. Like, <laughs> like the, Are you improvising a lot on the show? Not, not too, not too much. No. I mean, little moments here and there, probably I more than anyone else. You know, I'm not the only one writing it, but like, uh, you know, it's sort of like, oh, here's the chords and. And especially when things need to get anglicized, they're like, "Oh, we don't say." Yeah, I was gonna either. say, "Do you have British? Act, do you have British writers, or are they all yeah, either? Either they're either they're British or they're just doing darn good impressions." I mean, I think they're British. I haven't seen passports, but yeah. Are you loving being over there? Like, how does it feel shooting there? Like, does it feel? I because I shot one thing there and it was so much fun. I have enjoyed it here, and it's and it's a big part of I think the personnel too that we that the commercials were rooted in that we're trying to you know attain here. I mean, it, it would feel silly to bring everyone out there. We just need too many like you know uh, day players. It's it feels good to be doing it. You know, we we needed to have you have Dorothy to you feel it in Oz. the air. Yeah. <laughs>
Yes. Absolutely. And also like, it just feels the atmos- atmospherically, it just, you couldn't, you, you needed it to be there. But I'm telling yes. you that that's also part of why it's so, it's such comfort food too, is because like, oh, I want a pint and a meat pie. And I just want like, there's something about it that just feels like, yeah, just no, it's warm. I mean, it's not easy being away from family, being away from kids that, that, that takes is taxing, but for the project, any project itself, it, when you do it on location, whether the location truly is where it takes place, like, like we're doing in London or when you're, you know, when we're in Wilmington, it's like movie camp, you know, you're, you're so focused on that, that you sort of, it becomes immersive within, within itself. You're just like, okay. It makes you it makes you focus on that. I do want to I, I now knowing that the pilot that you did was was something with Justin Thoreau, correct? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Now I don't, and it was you, amazing. I, I assume Justin has, has told you this, but I know that after after you guys did Wanderlust together, and Wanderlust was before, yeah, it was was before we did We're the Millers. Yes. Do you know Do you know what he referred to you as? Are you going to embarrass me or something? The Meryl Streep of comedy. Oh my God! I, I remember being oh my at God. With him. And and, saying, and and when when you had signed on, you know, to, to be in Where the Most, he goes, "Oh, you know, she's the Meryl Streep of comedy." And I go, "Oh my go, God, Meryl Streep is funny herself. That is really ridiculous and flattering. He's so that's so awesome. And I he's mean, a, he, yeah. he's discerning taste. I mean, that guy, that guy knows, his, that guy knows his <laughs> junk. You know what I mean? Like, so when he when he said that, I was like, I was like, I was like, that tracks. That one hundred percent. You're like, for me. let's see. And yeah, then you no, were no, like, I, I, my mind was made up. Of that. I'm not I go, sure. I'm, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I was so psyched to get that job. I mean, and I love Aniston too, so madly. Like that was really a, a pleasure to be there. But again, with you, it's same thing, kid wise. That was one of those gigs where my kids couldn't come with me for whatever the reason. And it's like sometimes, you know, the older they get too, the more I'm like, I, it's just not fair to to them to to take them out of their social lives. <laughs> when in Rome, right? <laughs> yeah. Look at that. Okay. Hmm. Well, you know, I always figured that tea was just going to taste like hot brown water. And you know what? I was right. While you are starring in this show, in the world that we're living in, what does it feel like to be a contain to be a playing a person with such a non-cynical positive outlook? Is it ever exhausting? No, it feels great. I mean, mm. it it truly truly does. I you know, I mean, even down to the the glasses that I picked as as the character. I mean, mm. it was unintentional in the commercials, but then but then to I never thought about changing them because they remember the blue blocker commercials when we were kids and like it makes green yes. greener and bluer is blue. It's like that's that's an element of why I mm. continue to wear those orange tinted glasses as the character. Did you ever work with Don Scardino? He directed a bunch of things, but like I worked with him. Um, he directed a bunch of Thirty Rocks um, mm. when I got to guest star on that for a while. And I remember him saying a phrase that I know he didn't come up with, but he always had these, you know, he was like a guy that would say, you know, Hey, you got to ride the horse in the direction it's facing, you know? Um, and it's great. It's like a sitcom director. It makes total sense knowing what I know now, the, the, yes. the hoops I make, you know, our directors jump through. Totally. It's like, hey, th- this, this horse is facing that direction. I just gotta, I gotta mm-hmm. do that. Otherwise, you know, he'll, he'll tell someone else that I, he doesn't ride the horse in the right direction. Um, but, um, he also said, you know, you, you gotta be careful to, I'm going to butcher it. He had a more concise way of saying it, but you got to be—you never know what someone's going through. Everybody's fighting their own their own battle. Everybody's fighting their own war, and I just took that to heart with with like the character, where it's just like something comes at him. It may seem like it's kind of fun that people just think, "Oh, dummy doesn't get it," and it's like, "No, dummy, dummy gets it more than yes. <laughs> you are allowing you him know. to get it," and it doesn't bother him as much as it won't bother you when you accept the fact that maybe he gets it. And I mean, just within the character, not people watching the show per se, but um, I just found that to be refreshing. And it does, it changes your sort of, your attitude. Because I get asked a lot, like, how much of you is Ted or, 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 or vice versa? And I and I was glib about it early on, sort of not being able to under, appreciate that question or maybe what, what people were getting out of it. But here I am like six months later, or seven months later, eight months, whatever it is, since last August. And it's like, I used to say, oh, he's the best version of me. Or, oh, he's me on a beer and a half on an empty stomach, you know, like on a friend's boat. Um, or, you know, doing mushrooms. And it's like, no, I think it's, it's the, it's, I think it's like, I think it is the best version of me, but it might be a version of me that I don't realize I'm, I'm more capable of being outside of having, you know, wardrobe and good lighting and 
you know, more talented people to act against, you know, <laughs> like it's, it's like, it might be, it might be a way to, to truly, truly go about, you know, doing, doing the gig called life. One day I was driving my little boy to school and I saw this quote by Walt Whitman. It was painted on the wall there. It said, be curious, not judgmental. I like that. I don't have to even ask you this question because I know it, but you give a damn everything that you do. That's why you do it. That's why we do this. It's more fun to give a damn and give a damn every single time versus like, I'm going to pick and choose what I'm going to give a damn. Who am I acting with? How much am I being paid? How many weeks is it? No, it's like, no, give a damn every time, every line for every gig, you know, every yeah. sketch, whether you wrote it or someone else wrote it, whether you're in it or, you know, like, you know, or you were in it or you weren't in it, then you got put in it because four people dropped out or whatever the hell, who cares? Like here you are now, give a damn, and 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 then lo and behold, you know we do that enough times, <laughs> then this son of a gun shows. Yeah, I mean, um, I I will just also as an observer just say like as a mom of a almost of a teenager now, my dude is like fourteen and a half. Like man. to have it's so crazy, but to have a lead of a show be unafraid of being vulnerable is like is uh, I'm glad as a mom that you exist for, for these young men, because I, I think that there are so many things culturally that tell us that we can't be vulnerable or have our hearts on the outside or that we can't see the best in people that it's like, you know, we were talking about the phrase hilarious that kids use all the time. And it's like, ah, uh, it's just like a way of like, not, talking that anyway you're i'm just glad that ted is is there in for young men as a as something that is so funny but also vulnerable that it's not mean yeah the vulnerability thing wasn't anything i that um not not with the vocabulary of vulnerability you know conscious of you know not being snarky no, not being mean was 100 percent intentional and and the show rejects it like there were there were jokes that kind of slipped through that we would see in the edit that i'm like like oh that that just feel it just feels wrong mm, yeah did you go see like movies or watch tv a lot with your folks or was it was it something you would do on your own and sort of escape whatever you had going on it was like a it was a, the latter yeah you know yeah. like I, I mean when i would talk about like the sitcom it would always be like kind of it was like the constant hum of the laugh track was like background. Like it yeah. was like, I never really found myself laughing out loud, but right. it was like the hearth, you know, yeah. it was like a comforting place to be in front of. I would just like zone out, even though I knew it was funny. I never really laughed out loud. Right. Right. Um, like my dad, I, I, I have great memories of my dad taking me to like to go see Beverly Hills cop when I was nine, like in the theater. <gasps> and so when I think about like, you know, you know, whether you've watched it with your son or not at the same time or him watching it all, but hearing about families, you know, people watching it together and like, I know. you know, knowing, knowing that Roy Kent says, I mean, intentionally says, you know, loves his niece and is hard nosed and is based on the, you know, uh, you know, a couple different, you know, well-known soccer players, footballers, what have you. Um, and then dropping an F-bomb like every eighth word and parents being like, it doesn't matter the themes and the, <laughs> the spirit behind it. Yes. Over, it's like, it's, that's the same thing that like my dad intuited about Eddie Murphy and Axel Foley. Like here was a guy that was yes. sticking it to the man. I am really, truly so moved and happy for you. And like, it's just, Thank it's a, a beautiful thing that you made. I hope we don't blow it. <laughs> <laughs>